In this video we'll take a look at the Apple IIc, a classic computer that was one of the hugely popular Apple II series. I'll say something about the history of the computer, go over its hardware and software capabilities, give a demonstration, and take a look at the hardware inside. The Apple IIc was part of the Apple II series of computers. The original Apple II, introduced in 1977, followed the Apple I, the company's first product. Like the Apple I, it was a 6502-based single-board computer designed by Steve Wozniak. Running at 1 MHz with from 4K to 48K of RAM, it provided 40 columns of monochrome uppercase-only text to NTSC television video and supported mass storage using a cassette tape interface. Some of the improvements over the Apple I included low and high resolution color graphics capability, memory mapped video, inputs for paddles and joysticks, sound capability, and expansion slots. The ROM included the integer basic programming language designed by Steve Wozniak. Unlike the Apple I, which was just a circuit board, the Apple II was a complete computer with a case and power supply. The initial price ranged from US $1,298 to $2,638, depending on the amount of RAM supplied. The slots accommodated a number of Apple and third-party expansion and peripheral cards, the first of which was a 5.25 inch dual floppy drive controller, which made the system much more powerful and easier to use than with the cassette tape interface. In 1979, the Apple II Plus model was introduced, which added Microsoft's more powerful basic interpreter called AppleSoft in ROM and 48K of RAM standard. In 1983, the Apple IIe was introduced, which offered a lower cost and simpler design using some custom chips and had an auxiliary slot for an 80 column card. The Apple IIc, the subject of this video, was essentially an Apple IIe without slots but containing the equivalent of all of the common peripheral cards that would typically be found at an Apple II as well as a floppy disk drive. Improvements in technology meant that it could be built into a small unit that could be carried. It was later superseded by the similar Apple IIc Plus which switched to a 3.5 inch floppy drive, supported more memory and had a faster CPU. The Apple II GS was the last in the Apple II series and featured a 65816 processor, a 16-bit version of the 6502 which had backward compatibility to run existing 6502 code. The two GS used a mouse and graphical interface modeled in part on the Macintosh which was out by this time. The two GS was sold until 1992. The Apple IIe continued to be sold until 1993. The Apple IIc can be considered a portable computer, although it requires an external AC power supply and display. It weighs 7.5 pounds, 3.4 kilograms, and has a built-in carrying handle. The CPU is the low-power CMOS 65CO2 processor running at 1 MHz, and it has 128K of RAM and either 16 or 32K of ROM. The ROM included AppleSoft Basic with some changes over the Apple IIe to support lowercase characters and commands and better support for the 80 column display and mouse text characters used with the optional mouse. It has the equivalent of five expansion cards built in, an 80 column card, two super serial cards, a mouse interface and a floppy disk controller. Text modes are monochrome with 40 or 80 columns of text and 24 lines. Low resolution graphics mode is 80 by 48 pixels with 15 colors. High resolution graphics is 280 by 192 pixels with 6 colors. It also supported double low resolution of 80 by 48 and double high resolution of 560 by 192 pixels, the same as the Apple IIe. There's a built in 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive. There are rear connectors for the two serial ports, external floppy drive, power supply, joystick or paddles, NTSC video, mouse, and a video expansion connector. It has a built-in speaker with volume control and headphone jack. It features a 63-key keyboard with open Apple and closed Apple keys and reset. There's a switch for selecting 40 or 80 column display, 
and another switch for selecting between standard QWERTY or Dvorak keyboard layouts or foreign keyboard layouts on international models. You could manually move the keycaps around to reflect the Dvorak layout if desired. The original version of the Apple IIc had 128K of RAM. A later revision of the board added a socket to allow expanding the memory to 1 megabyte. At the same time, the keyboard, floppy drive latch, and power supply cord were changed slightly in color. The power supply is an external unit dubbed the Brick on a Leash, which provides approximately 15 volts DC at 1.2 amps, which is then regulated internally in the computer. The computer will generally work with any composite video monitor. Apple sold a matching 9-inch, 23-centimeter monochrome CRT display with an elevated stand. Apple also sold a monochrome LCD screen designed for the 2C called the Apple Flat Panel Display that turned the unit into more of a laptop, although it still required external power. On the rear panel, from right to left, we have the following controls and connectors. Power switch, power connector, printer serial port, external floppy drive, composite video out, video expansion port, modem serial port, and the joystick paddle or mouse port. Let's see a quick demonstration of the unit in operation. On power up or when reset using the control open apple reset key combination, the unit attempts to boot from the internal floppy drive. With no disk present, you can hit control reset to go into the AppleSoft Basic contained in ROM. The unit could run the Apple DOS 3.3 or the later ProDOS operating system. Here I'm booting a standard ProDOS 2.0.3 floppy disk. After booting, it goes into AppleSoft. Also in ROM is the machine language monitor which provides basic capabilities for reading and writing memory, executing machine language programs, single stepping and tracing, and even disassembling and assembling machine language code. AppleSoft is a full basic interpreter with support for floating point math, low and high resolution graphics, and paddles and joysticks. With DOS or ProDOS, you could use it to program file input output, both sequential and random access. When running DOS, you could also load the older integer basic from Floppy and run programs written for it. Hundreds of software applications were developed for the Apple II series. Many of these are available on the internet. The list included everything from games to productivity software like AppleWorks that provided an integrated word processor, spreadsheet, and database to software development tools like 6502 assemblers and compilers for languages like Pascal, Fortran, and C. I use free software called ADT Pro to initially transfer disk images to the machine over a serial connection from a desktop computer so I could create bootable disks. I've also purchased a product called Floppy EMU which emulates an external floppy or hard disk, allowing many disk images to be stored on its internal SD card and accessed without requiring physical floppy disks. It can emulate four hard disk drives, each with a capacity of 32 megabytes, providing a huge amount of storage for a computer of this era. Let's take a look inside the unit. Opening the case is a little tricky. After removing four bottom screws, you need to carefully pry open the case by bending some plastic tabs, and then lift up the upper half. Here we can see all the major parts, the keyboard, power supply regulator, and floppy drive. Underneath the keyboard is the main PCB or motherboard, some of which is also underneath the floppy drive. 
The motherboard includes ROMs, the CPU, some custom chips, the RAM chips, and some miscellaneous glue logic. It uses five custom chips, including the IWM, or Integrated WAS Machine, which integrated Steve Wozniak's disk controller design into a single chip. The floppy drive is a standard five and a quarter inch unit similar to the drives that were sold uh, externally for the other Apple II models. This unit was bought on eBay in 2015. It was complete with power supply, a few floppy disks, but no cables or manuals. It's the original model A2S4000 with 128K of RAM. This unit had the original ROM version known as version 255. The date codes on the ICs indicate a manufacturing date of around late 1984. The unit was working and was able to boot from the included floppies. It has some yellowing of the plastic case, but is in better shape than most units of the era. I replaced the ROM with one that had the newer revision zero, which adds support for a power on self-test and external three and a half inch and hard drives. It also includes the monitor step and trace commands and mini assembler. The newer ROM is a 32K chip versus the 16K it replaced, so two motherboard trace changes need to be made as per the Apple service manual that documents the upgrade. There were two later revisions to the ROM, but these were for the newer board, which had the memory expansion slot. Something I noticed when burning the new ROM was that the first 256 bytes of the chip that are otherwise not used or accessible contain the names of the Apple developers who worked on it. In fact, the older revision ROM had a well-known Easter egg where reading the contents of slot 5 would return the developers' names. I ordered some five and a quarter inch floppy disks, which are still made, but only from a couple of suppliers. I used the ADT Pro software and made a suitable serial cable so I could transfer some floppy disk images from a desktop PC. A couple of other useful applications are Cider Press and Apple Commander, which can manipulate files and Apple II disk images on a desktop computer. I cleaned the unit inside and out, including cleaning the floppy disk drive head, and I adjusted the drive speed. As mentioned, I bought the floppy EMU disk emulator and made a number of suitable disk images for it. The computer is able to boot from the floppy emulator drive. I've ordered but not yet received a low-cost real-time clock chip called a no-slot clock, which I'll install, and is supported by ProDOS for timestamping files. Years ago, I had an Apple IIe computer and learned a lot about programming with it. I was surprised how quickly all of the old Apple II commands came back to me when using the Apple IIc. I've been having a lot of nostalgic fun running old software and using the excellent CC65 C compiler and 6502 cross-assembler to port and write some programs for the computer. Here's an adventure game that I wrote running on it. Because it requires approximately 12 volts DC, you can power the unit with external batteries, making it a true portable, assuming you have a suitable battery-powered monitor. Individuals and third parties made battery packs, which were still external to the computer. In the movie 2010, the sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey, the main character is shown at the beach using a stock Apple IIc with the LCD display and no apparent external power source. The Apple IIc was made from 1984 to 1988. The Apple II series from the original Apple II in 1977 to the Apple II GS is estimated to have sold between 5 and 6 million units, making it one of the longest running mass produced home computer series with models in production for just under 17 years. There's still an active community of people using the Apple II series, as indicated by numerous websites, forums, conferences, and even new hardware and software products. Recently, someone even managed a feat that was not considered possible, implementing a version of Java that will run on the Apple II. There are also Ethernet cards, TCP IP networking software, and even web browsers. A comprehensive new book on the Apple II was published in 2012. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Apple IIc computer. Please check out my other YouTube videos on retro computers, electronics, and test equipment.